Hey everybody, this will be the uh, second video in the ECG project series. Uh, as you can see, I've got a new desk here with a lot more space. Uh, scope there is broken, that'll be for another video series. Uh, I'm also in a much bigger apartment now, uh, so hopefully you won't hear the fridge compressor turning on in the middle of this. Uh, anyway, let's get right onto the circuit. Alright, this is my new circuit. It's uh, an instrumentation amplifier, or in amp, uh, with a few extra things added onto it. Um, I actually like to make another full video just about the in-amp because I think it's a pretty neat circuit all on its own. Um, so I won't go into too much detail about exactly how it works here, um, but I'll explain some of the more important things about it. Uh, first of all, the uh, most important difference between this and the previous circuit is that this is a differential amplifier instead of a single-ended amplifier, uh, which means it has two inputs, uh, which are these two here. And those are both uh, two separate signals that are taken with reference to uh, some ground electrode. And, uh, and instead of just uh, amplifying one signal, it uh, subtracts one signal from the other and uh, amplifies the difference between them. Uh, and the idea is that hopefully uh, these two electrodes should be picking up the same amount of 60 hertz from the walls. Um, so when I subtract one from the other, the uh, 60 hertz will cancel out and magically disappear. Uh, but hopefully, since these two are in different spots on my chest, they should have a, a uh, different amount of heartbeat signal on them. Um, so that'll be the difference between the two signals that gets amplified. Uh, this amplifier is made up of these three op amps. I'll get to this fourth one in a bit. Um, but basically it has two stages, which I'm going to call the uh, front end and the back end. Uh, the front end is these two uh, amplifiers, and the back end is this one. Basically the front end is uh, two non-inverting amplifiers sort of put together in a sort of special way and the back end is a uh, differential amplifier. Uh, the reason the front end is there at all, uh, since this is already a differential amplifier, is to um, give the two inputs a uh, very high input resistance, uh, which is nice for uh, measuring voltages without um, drawing any current, which would uh, change the voltage that I'm trying to measure. And this fourth op amp down here is part of my uh, DC offset adjustment circuit. Um, I have a little variable resistor here that I'm using as a, uh, a variable voltage divider. Uh, and then I have the op amp set up as a voltage follower. Uh, so essentially I have a variable voltage source um, at this node in the circuit here. Uh, with a normal differential amplifier, um, this node would be connected to ground. And by having a variable voltage source there instead of a ground, uh, I can actually have a third input to the differential amplifier, um, which is the back end stage. Um, so if I see a DC offset at the output, I can just sort of uh, turn this knob and subtract off a DC value until it disappears. Uh, and again, I added a couple of capacitors, uh, one across the uh, two inputs there, uh, which, um, just like the capacitor between the uh, two electrodes in the first circuit, is there to uh, act as a short circuit to radio. Um, so hopefully there shouldn't be any uh, radio frequency voltage showing up between those two uh, inputs there. And again, this large capacitor at the output is there to serve as a uh, DC blocking capacitor so that I don't uh, uh, have any DC showing up at the uh, microphone input to my computer. If I zoom out here a bit, I've got some more stuff on the paper. Uh, and up here I have the gain equation for the entire amplifier, uh, which has two separate terms to it, one term for the uh, front end and one term for the back end. So I want to give this uh, ten times the gain of the last amplifier I used, so this will have a gain of a thousand. Uh, but I could split that gain between the front end and the back end a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, so down here I have a table of uh, resistor values that go along with uh, uh, different gains of the front end and the back end. Uh, so I have uh, two different setups planned, one where the front end has a gain of ten and the back end has a gain of a hundred and one where the front end has a gain of 100 and where the back end has a gain of 10. Uh, in both cases they end up with a gain of 1000, um, but they might have some different properties. Um, for instance, I expect that the uh, when I have a smaller gain at the front end, um, I'll have less of a problem with DC offset, um, but more of a problem with uh, noise getting into the amplifier. And I expect with the higher gain at the front end, um, I'll have uh, fewer problems with 60 hertz noise and such, and uh, more problem with DC offset. I'll talk about why I think that is um, when I make the uh, in-amp video, uh, but for now that's just a prediction, and I really don't know how big the problems are going to be in either case, uh, so I'm going to try them both and see what happens. 
All right, so circuit number two is all set up and ready to go. Uh, this first test is going to have a uh, front end gain of 10 and a back end gain of 100. Um, so I have one of the signal electrodes over to the left side of my chest, uh, the other signal electrode over on the right side, and then um, a ground electrode here. You, uh, you really don't want to know where I'm going to stick that. So I'll just put that up. Woo, gold. OK, so that's on. Let's flip this guy on here. And we can see my little DC offset there. Uh, this should go between um, uh, it should go between uh, zero and uh, about 17 or 18 volts, depending on how fresh my batteries are. Um, right now, I'm turning that little knob that uh, should let me control the DC offset, and it looks like it's doing its job pretty well. Now I'm going to leave the DC offset uh, somewhere in between uh, zero and 17. Um, so that uh, if it drifts a bit, uh, it should still be uh, within the output range of my uh, circuit. And then I'll start recording. Okay, so it looks like, uh, looks like a nice little flat line there, uh, but I'm not dead, so there should be a heartbeat signal in there somewhere. I'm going to push on the uh, signal electrodes a little bit, and hopefully the shot should give it a little bit of a better connection and I'll be able to see something going on in there. Okay, I can see some little blips sticking out of there, which might be heartbeats. Right, I'm going to stop recording there. And then let's uh, grab a little section of this here and just amplify it. Alright, so that looks pretty nice. So there's definitely a heartbeat in there. Uh, which is nice. It looks upside down, but that's just because you got the uh, electrodes backwards. Uh, there is still some noise in there. I'm going to have to investigate where that's coming from. Uh, but the most important thing is that the heartbeat signal is larger than the noise, um, which means the differential amplifier is doing its job. All right, so it looks like I still uh, don't have enough gain. Um, so a gain of 1,000 wasn't quite good enough to uh, see the heartbeat in real time. Uh, so I'm going to give it 10 times more gain. I'm going to give it a gain of uh, 10,000 before the next experiment. And uh, then I'll start messing with uh, whether the front end or back end has more gain. Uh, I'm actually going to cut the video off here. Um, I don't want it to get too long. So in the next video I'm going to have uh, even more gain. And uh, I'll show the two tests with the uh, different gains for the front end and back end. I won't have that long intro at the beginning for the circuit, so uh, hopefully it'll go a bit quicker than this video did.